<laughs> you're just fine. <laughs> Praise him. And um, so my name is Dustin Owens. I am uh, one of the staff ministers here at Cornerstone Worship Center in Fond du Lac. I am our sectional Sunday school representative as of March, and it's been my privilege to work with the team. And uh, I, uh, this is my first opportunity ever really speaking in a forum quite like this. And so I guess you all are uh, the guinea pigs for this project. So <clears throat> be kind and gentle in your evaluations. Um, we have a topic that I think is very um, important in life. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, as I, I've been through uh, numerous training uh, sessions on this type of topic with the state of Wisconsin, whom I'm employed on a chaplain in the prison system, and um, also uh, had some other things in school. But <clears throat> what I wanted to get away from is when it was initially brought up, it was talking about personalities and what I have experienced anyways, and I'm not sure if you have. The minute you say something about personalities, everybody's read a book or everybody's took a test, mm -hmm. and they immediately assign, okay, you're sanguine, so you're this, or you're melancholy, so you're this, or you're phlegmatic, so, and cholerics, you're all just mean and, and <laughs> rude and all this kind of thing. And I wanted to stay away from the stereotypical applications that we have sometimes to it just by personality. And what I found for myself is that um, communication, perhaps because of these tendencies, is, is, is where we would like to, to focus this. And in Sunday school, I think this is very much applicable. And um, so here we are. The, our our uh, Sunday school team brought this up, and, and I shared something, uh, this kind of information that I've been trained in, and because I found it to be very impactful for myself. And it helped me to understand people a little bit differently. And it's always a work in progress because I am constantly filtering things through my own way of communication and understanding. Um, how many of you have ever heard or read of the book, The Five Love Languages? Okay, it's a tremendous it's a tremendous tool, but what it basically tries to get you to do is to, to start thinking through other people's, uh, take that information and understand maybe this is why they react or communicate in the way that they do. And we're gonna try to do that. Um, I am not here trying to present uh, myself as an expert in any of this. Um, I am a student in it as, uh, in it, as well as uh, perhaps yourselves, and uh, hopefully what we cover today is going to be something that will help you in your classes. Um, in the brief summary that you have, I'm just going to read this really quickly. It says, many times, despite our very best efforts, we lose our effectiveness within our classrooms as teachers. And uh, my assumption is, is that you are efforting, um, that you are putting energy and you are putting prayer and you're putting yourself into that classroom. And, but sometimes despite those efforts, we sometimes are not as successful as we might want to be. And so this is our constant uh, effort in trying to become better at that. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why you succeed with some students and yet seem to miserably fail at connecting with others. That's me. I, I do that. I work with men on a daily basis in the prison. I, I, I cover for Sunday school. I preach on a fairly regular basis. And all these times there are some people that I connect with like this and they're there, they're engaged, they're with me and they're following. And there's times like a discussion I had with my wife just the other day, I had this awesome thought and I was putting this together to preach and it was deep. It was good stuff. I mean, solid. And I mean, I was excited. And I'm on the, wife, I, I, on the phone with, with, with my wife and I call her up. This is just, and I'm sharing this with her and nothing. And I'm like, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I, th I think so. I think you don't understand what this this means. What this 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 means? And I went through it all again. Yeah, um, maybe you have to explain it to me later. And I'm like, what are you not getting? What what this is good stuff. I mean, I'm like, come on. And, and you find that there's sometimes it's the communication style. It's, it's the way that we look at certain things. And for me, you get preaching like Brother Davis has given us, man, you preach for 10 hours. Yeah. I'm there. Right. I love it. I'm, I'm, this is what I like. And you get up there and, and um, you know, I'm a Pentecostal. And, and, and well, praise the Lord. 
I kind of assumed we were when we came to church. We showed up here, we're Pentecostal. And this is not to denigrate anybody else's personality. This is part of what we need to understand. We're different. We know this in our brains, but in practice many times we forget it. And we communicate or we expect others to receive based off of the way we do it. So I miserably fail at that sometimes because of my own communication style. I know that I have, and many times this happens due to our communication styles or lack of understanding the communication styles of others. In this short session, we'll attempt to shed some light on this important topic. This is not designed to be the answer for every question. Don't we all wish that that would be the case? This is not going to solve every anything, but hopefully this will be... Uh, it's designed to be a tool in your Sunday school toolbox to assist you in being a more effective communicator. We'll also address some of the reasons that some of our students act out based on this information, as well as ways that we can alleviate some of those very same problems by being more attuned to their communication needs. And do not be surprised if this helps you elsewhere. Um, we talk, I gave the example of my marriage already. This will help you everywhere with everybody that you communicate with if you can take these principles. So without any further uh, introduction, I'm going to get to this once again. I'll say this is uh, the first time that I'm doing this in a teaching uh, style environment. Um, I'm used to preaching. I love to preach. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to adjust a little bit because this is not uh, preaching here. So um, I am basing a lot of this information um, from a woman whose name is Mary Mississippi. And um, I have had this with other people taught by other facilitators. This is in the UW system under a different thing. They use colors as well there. You may have even experienced this. Like I said, I've done it a couple of times. I have friends who've been part of it, and, they've, and they have taught based on this. I am not trying to teach that course. I'm using some of this information uh, to use it as just kind of a, an entry to our topic. But what we want to do is think more in lines of what these communication styles are. A quote, a quote that is here, to, I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I say this to my wife all of the time. Um, before this is done, you will understand that Sister Owens and I are polar opposites. I mean, in just about every way possible. Um, I am constantly telling my wife, I said what I said. I meant what I said. That's all I meant when I said what I said. It was not needing of interpretation. I will explain to you what I meant. I wasn't, there was no hidden, underlying anything. It was, that was it. But I thought you meant that, uh, no. This is not, but, okay. It's communication. There are some people that they'll give it to you right over the top, and there's a lot of underlying stuff that may be connected to it. With Brother Owens, this is not the case. I'll give it to you just, that's all it was. And um, it's, it's pretty simple. I'm a very intentional type of person. So, have you ever tried, and I'm sure we all have, so the question really is almost irrelevant, but have you tried to communicate something to someone, and it just didn't come out right? Or perhaps you thought it came out right, but they took it wrong. How many times do we have discussions, arguments, fights, whatever you would like to call them? Misunderstandings is usually the best word that applies. Mm -hmm. What I was saying and what you interpreted were two very different things. Mm -hmm. Or what you said and what I interpreted were two very different things. And what we want to do is not only resolve conflict here, but become effective in being able to bring our message in, in, in an accurate way so that it is able to be received. To be able to as we begin to interact with people to realize, you know what, maybe they have a little bit, don't, we don't want to personality profile everybody that you see or try to peg them, but perhaps maybe understand that your communication style or your behavior style, um, I may need to adjust my communication in order to effectively reach you. It's what we do in soul winning all the time. There are some people, you, you sit down and you give them the Bible study, and there's others that you give them a little tidbit here and there, and as they respond to it, you give them a little bit more because of where they are, what their desires are. I'm going to give a brief, real brief overview. Uh, blues communication, uh, blues world, now these are, this is just this uh, format's colors. 
pick any colors you want to have. It really doesn't make any difference, but I'm going to relate them as this uh, program does. Blue, orange, gold, and green. Blue's world revolves around people, relationships, fostering growth in themselves and others. When speaking, they first focus their attention on establishing a relationship or reconnecting with a person. Now, as you read some of these things, you're going to find these key words are very important in there. I'm going to, your outline that you have, I'm going to get to that. So to uh, save you from trying to follow it right now, the, the next thing I give you will be giving those outline answers. Um, the information they wish to convey is woven into this relationship building endeavor. So these blues, these people that are blues, they're very much about relationships and connecting with people, their feelings and emotions and all of this. And, and there's, you, you, you will begin, as we just touch on these, to begin to think about people that you know or even yourself and say, yes, that's me. Please, in every facilitation of any program like this, they say, you're going to be a blend. Okay, so don't, well, that's not right. I mean, I'm really this, but I don't think that you're going to be a blend. You're, you're, you're going to find that there's predominance, and then there'll be a secondary and maybe a, a third. If you're a perfect person, you'll have a balance of them all. So if you're perfect, please excuse the rest of us while we stumble through, <laughs> stumble through the rest. Okay, some of these things are friendly, helpful, empathetic. They're optimistic type people. They're very expressive with emotion. For me, I like facts, figures, all that stuff. Give it to me real, and I'll deal with that. I don't want all the, you know, and the emotions and all that. The emotions in, in my world, they come, they go. This is all relative. Let's keep it, stick with the facts, nothing but the facts. They, you know, so, but they are very expressive. They're fostering and maintaining harmony. They want this togetherness. They want this team and, you know, and very Barney-ish, you know. Can't we all just love one another? And can't we all just get along? And, you know, Kumbaya is the theme song. And this is the type of person that they are. They may use metaphors to embellish points. Uh, when you are communicating with them, you want to acknowledge them. They need affirmation. They need to know you care. They need to know that you believe in them and so forth. So you're constantly, you want to acknowledge them, show appreciation, have patience, don't bark orders. This is where I come in. I don't think I'm barking, but I'm just giving it to you, you know. So that's what you want to do. With the goal people, they're very purposeful. They plan ahead, they're respectful, appropriate. Okay, they're supportive of policies and rules. I am one of these kind of people. This I am a predominant gold and green. Supportive of policies and rules are detail-oriented. They're very chronological. They are loyal and devoted. If you have a team, they're on the team. They're not switching midstream. You know, uh, team can be bad. They're still with the team. You know, I can, I can uh, jump on my team and be mad at my team, but you can't. Don't you ever get mad at my team This is because this is my team, but because it's my team, I can't. So, uh, when you communicate, be prepared, give details, stay on target, be consistent, show respect, do not interrupt. <laughs> Sister Owens and I go round and round on this because, again, we're coming different things and she wants to interject. Uh, hey, I'm saying something here. Some of you may feel the same way. You go, let me finish my thought, please, you know, and then I'll let you talk. Um, recognize their contributions with the greens. They're, they're illogical, objective, include facts and information. They're big picture, concept-oriented people. They're questioning. They critique. They want to know the whys. They want to know what it is. They want to see if your idea holds up against their uh, criticisms. Their criticisms may not really be a criticism as we might understand it, but they want to see if it's for real and if it holds up. They have a wry sense of humor, and some might say we don't have a sense of humor. Um, but we do in our own minds. You know, our jokes just aren't always funny to everybody else. <clears throat> when communicating with them, allow them to ponder. Skip the small talk. Avoid redundancy. Give the big picture a point first and then fill in the details if asked. Don't misinterpret their need for info as interrogation. Once again, if you find yourself in a communication with one of these, uh, you know, um, other people, you know, like these blues, they're saying, don't, don't yell at me, don't yell at me. And I'm not yelling at you. I, come on, I, I need to know. I need to know the details, okay? Orange, they're casual, playful, spontaneous, and now-oriented. 
fast-paced changes subjects quickly. They are straightforward, active, involved, and mobile. Sister Owens is uh, orange and blue, and I am gold and green. So you can imagine what the household is like at times when you have these two. You know, she's all the party, the life party. Everybody loves Sister Owens, and everybody says, Brother Owens, he's so serious. He just... <laughs> So intense, and whatever. And Sister Owens is just woohoo, woohoo. She led worship for the junior camp and and and, uh, and and at the family camp with the kids. And the kids love her. And I'm trying to get up there, you know, fill in that points and trying to be, you know, I, I feel like I'm looking like a, a retard. That I'm just, oh my goodness, you know, and I'm trying to get outside myself to engage these young people. And my wife, it's just there. It's and this is the type. They're very active and involved. And when you communicate, use sound bites. Real short. Don't give them this long thing. My mother tells me sometimes, Dustin, just give me the helicopter version. Don't take a 40, 747, you know, landing strip. Just give me, sit down and be done. And I'm like, but you need to understand why this is. And you go on. Uh, appreciate their flair. Move with them while they multitask. Allow options and flexibility and as I am constantly told, light it up. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is, is try to uh, kind of delve a little bit below the surface here on when you're communicating with those that are blues, and this is the, the approach for communicating with the blues, okay? When you communicate, they like to take the time to relate. So now, as you as we're going over these, I would like for you to think within your Sunday school classes. Now, how many uh, teach real young children? Okay, any of you with the teens? Any with the teens? Okay, you do something. And then the, those 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 middle ages, you know, the eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelves. Okay, all right. You're going to see this, and in some, it's going to, it's going to be different. The real young children are going to be just a little bit different as their personalities develop and their, and their likes and dislikes develop. And when you get to the teens, they're in some sense established, at least in their minds they are. It may adjust a little bit as they get older. But think about these because your classes are comprised of a variety of all of these. And as you are teaching your class, we cannot, because the message we're giving is not hygiene, okay? Hygiene is important, but that's not what we're teaching. Okay, and we're not just teaching science, and science is important. We are delivering the Word of God, and when we are doing this, we need to present it the most effective way that is possible. This little bit of training here, and hopefully it's going to be a tool that you can use and that you can maybe investigate even deeper in your own time. We only had so much time, but it's going to take work. It's going to take some very sincere observational skills on your part to try to define these students in your class. And if you are not committed to doing that, you will be effective with some, but you will be ineffective with others. Our message, we as Sunday school teachers, how many of you have a lot of bus children or children from the community that come only on Sunday morning? In our church here, we have a lot. Almost half of our Sunday school is children that come from the community and are not uh, have family members in our church. And it's a, actually a very expanding ministry. With those, and if you ever get into that point, you only have moments. You may not have five years with them. I grew up in the church, and so I was with every class from the very bottom all the way to the top. You have time to develop, and each teacher's personality gets to have its impact, and they begin to get the message because our, our, our lessons tend to be repetitive after at least use about three years, and they recycle and so forth. Well, if you have that long, that's wonderful, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you may only have a short period of time, and if you didn't connect with them, those children don't want to come back. And so as teachers, and it, it's important that we do that even with our, our children of, of the family members that are existing in our church that are solid, it's important because we want them to be involved in every stage. They shouldn't have to wait one, two, or three years in order to get to the teacher. That's just awesome. 
I remember when I was a Sunday school teacher, it was uh, Sister Sister Brenda Walter and Sister Apple, and they would act out classes and everything, and I loved it, you know. And uh, you know, the others, you know, were they're going by the lesson and everything, and it was good. But these, they would dress up and they would do stuff, and it would be, you know, Samson over here and and and, and all this and tearing down the house and David and Goliath and whacking off the giant's head, and and it was like. Yes, this is awesome. You never knew what was coming in the next class. Well, by the time I got to that class, they decided to split it. And now the girls are going to be over here. And they got Sister Walter and Sister Apple. And the boys were over here. And we got Brother Mir. Oh, no. And he was very serious. <clears throat> and he brought the word of God. And you need to pay attention. <laughs> and sit still. My disappointment was profound. <laughs> My spirit was crushed. You understand? Mm -hmm. If we do a little bit, I am a very boring person sometimes to some personalities because I'm not really, you know, I mean, I, I feel foolish when I'm doing this now. And, and so, uh, <laughs> you see, if we develop ourselves, I can't change everybody. But I can adjust myself if I'm willing. And I can, I, I may not become this other. I'm not stuck with my personality. My personality can't be changed. I can do this. But if I bring a little something to myself, I can still be me, but be perhaps more effective. So as we're dealing with these, we need to understand that some of these students, they need time to relate. They do want to connect with you. They do want to establish something personal, especially these groups. They are often thought of as good listeners. I have a friend that you just say, that's what you'd call them. They're a good listener. They're just a good. I've had friends like that that, you know, they'll sit there and listen to your story and you can cry and talk and they're just, oh, yes. Oh, that's. And there's people like me, and we'll get into them here, and they always suck it up. <laughs> just get over it. You know, life happens while you're making plans. Okay? <laughs> These people, they're good listeners. And people are attracted to them many times because they will listen. And, and they make you feel important. They make you feel like what you're going through matters to them because they will listen and they will engage. And they, they enjoy this. They like to establish eye contact, contact and be there. You know the whole be there thing? This is blues. They are very much in that. And they're there as a confidant, as a friend, and a support. And they're most comfortable in conversation when they feel they made a personal connection. <coughs> now, if you have one of these, if you fail to make that personal connection, they will feel, and it goes to say, disconnected. If they're not connected in your class, then there's all sorts of opportunity for them to either not receive your message or decide, I don't want to come. Okay? Now, with some of these, you know, if their parents in your church, they're going to come anyways, but... They feel extra special if the other person shares something, personal nature. So when you're teaching in this class and you have some of these young people and you tell them something about you and you look them in the eye and you share it, they felt they just got a piece of you. That's awesome. I'm now, I'm, I mean, we're friends now. You know, we're, 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 we're buddies. We're, we're, and you do that with these blues and you have them. And they're loyal people. And so they'll stay with you. You don't have to do this every single day. You don't have to do this every single class with each one. But if you will invest in them and let them know that it matters, when you pray with them and you interact, what can we pray together? What, what, what does it mean? They like this. They're, you're giving them an opportunity to share themselves, and then you're there with them. You know, I felt that way once, too. You know, I once had a friend. I did this in a Sunday school class. I was filling in for a 12-year-old. And we ended up having a move of God in that class just because we took the story, one simple point, and I shared something personal from myself, and we ended up the whole class, and I mean bus kids, my dad's in jail. He killed somebody. And I don't know when he's coming home. And these students began to share. And the one young lady was in tears, and so I said, you know what, why don't we do this? Why don't we all gather up and let's pray? And we did this. And it was an amazing thing. Very not me. But we just one small point, and it can make a difference. All right. They like to connect with others. They'll try to communicate in a way that fosters. I'm going to give you four things here. Cooperation. Harmony. T 
team and togetherness. All right? They feel good about a conversation when it is enhancing and nurturing for people. Personal growth and self-development are of great interest to blues who can be an inspirational mentor to others. Why? Because they're all about this connecting. They're all about this make me feel good about myself and I want to share myself with you. Sister Owens has stepped into the back of the room here now, so all these things I've been telling about us. They tend to talk about relationships <laughs> and people. Again, this is all about relating, all about this connecting, all right? They dislike, these are some of their frustrations, they dislike negativity and they will always try to avoid conflict. See now, the others, and we'll get into this, when Sister Owens and I are having discussion, for Sister Owens, it's conflict. For me, it's problem solving. This is not negative. This is a good thing. We are doing good things. And it's, it's a matter of perspective. So how do we adjust these things so that we can communicate, so that we can build this that we're looking for? When it comes to criticism and critique, blues really need to hear that you value them as a person before you share feedback that suggests areas for improvement. If they don't know you value you, you're sharing them something that's going to improve them, and they're just thinking, you don't like me. You don't like me. You think I'm this. You think I'm that. It's negative. It's criticism. It's critique. They're not ready for it until they know you care. Somebody once said, you know, they'll know, you know, they'll care about what you say when they know that you care. That was probably a blue that put that together. Because somebody else like me, a gold or a green, I don't really need to know that you care. Caring is good. Uh, no, I like caring. Caring is good. <laughs> but the truth is the truth. Right. <laughs> and it applies no matter what. So whether you like me or not, you can hate me and preach the truth, and I'm going to receive the truth. A blue, if you hate the blue, they're gone. They need to be connected to you. All right. We're going to move, just for time's sake, I'm going to move real quickly over to the goal. And this, you've gotten a good dose of because this is me. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to <coughs> hit the high points because I want to get to another portion of this. When communicating, goals are always goal-oriented. They're about accomplishment. Generally, they initiate a conversation to get specifics so that they can fulfill their responsibilities. I'm goal-oriented. Tell me what I need to know, what you want from me, so I can get the job done. That's what I want. Take all the touchy-feely stuff, have it, just give, me the, give it to me in the raw, and I'll get the job done for you. All right? The goals tend to talk about the right way of doing things. And Sister Owens can tell you, I'm constantly saying there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. And this helps, we're going to do it the right way. It's the Lord. And all you blues are like, my goodness, he's a slave driver. <laughs> That's going to be some the way that this is appearing time. Is that, no, there's right ways and there's wrong ways. And this is the way we see some things. Sometimes we can be too black and white, but that's the way it is. It is very clear in a gold's mind the right way to do things. Okay, There usually isn't much room for in between. As I said, there's a right way and a wrong way. They sometimes have a tendency to speak in all or nothing terminology. And this is where I say, I'm not all or nothing. I don't, I'm very much able to sift out the other. So this is where my blend comes in. But many times they like this. Using words like always and never, have to, must, should, shouldn't, all of that is going to be mixed into theirs because there is a right way or there's a wrong way. Goals feel good. They're motivated. They feel good about a conversation when it's practical, realistic, concrete. It has the facts. Okay? And when communicating, they like people to be specific about expectations. I want to know what you expect out of me. Because this is going to be the thing that identifies myself as being successful or not. I need to know what you expect, and I will do what it takes to get that expectation accomplished. Okay? They are reverent of lessons learned from history. Golds commonly rely on the past to help them make decisions about the future. They will examine what has worked before and discuss how it applies to the current situation. 
Now I'm going to throw this in here. There is one danger of this. And we need to be careful as Sunday school teachers and anywhere else in our life to be so attached to the past that you can never move to the future. To say, well, we've done it, always done it this way, and this is the always way in this room, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel, and there's all sorts of consideration to give, but change is good at times. And goals need to be able to accept that. All right. In communication, goals dislike nonconformity. And they disdain those that disregard authority, try to beat the system, or go around others. They are loyal, okay? And they are there. And if you have a disrespect for it, this is going to drive them batty. All right? So now you've got some of these students in your class. How do you adjust your class? You've got somebody over here who wants to connect, and you've got somebody over here who just wants the facts. You balance your class. Some of you, how many of your class divided into several different areas or aspects? Like say, you know, um, tree, snack, uh, craft, the lesson, something else. Have you perhaps maybe different portions? What you may want to do is consider how you can reach to this one who wants the facts and this one that wants to connect by giving somebody a taste of something or give them like you'll catch me in the beginning you say what I'm going to do in this class is we are going to address um, a particular topic and what I want you to do is think of ways that this might apply in your life and as we go through the class okay we're going to discuss some of the things and we're going to see how many of you uh, have thought of some of these points and maybe at the end we'll give you an opportunity to talk now you've got me because the whole class, I'm going to be sitting here thinking, okay, well, this applies to this, it applies to that, it applies to this, and this way, and, and I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm there with you in your class, and I'm listening because I'm checking my list. I've got lists, to-do lists, okay? And this is the thing, and this is getting into our next one, the greens, okay? Um, and I'm going to be checking them off in my mind to see if I beat you, because it's going to be a competition for me. And I'm going to see if I think of something that you did. I did this in Bible college. I mean, I've got Brother Norris teaching. He's one of the finest Bible teachers that we have. And he is, I mean, you know, in the Greek and the Hebrew and stuff. And he's, I mean, wow. And I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think of something Brother Norris didn't think of. Which is pretty presumptuous coming from a 17-year-old at the time. But I was. I'm, I'm going to think of that. He took a Trinitarian approach. And so I was going to, I'm going to get that one verse and I'm going to nail Brother Norris to the wall. <laughs> Dude, you're going to engage him this way. And while these are engaged, you might reach to one specifically and say, can you think of a time where this has ever affected your life? Now you've connected. Do you see what we're doing? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to teach you. Well, you've probably all been teaching Sunday school longer than, than uh, you know, I, I could ever have dreamed of. But this is how we can try to engage all these different people by giving somebody a tidbit that they're going to hold on to while reaching to another. It doesn't take that long, but it does take thought. You have to be purposeful. All right. Goals will be steadfast and determined to assist others by pointing out the errors of their ways and redirecting them to the established customs. We want everybody to conform. We want everybody to be in order. We want everybody to be, you know, everything has its proper place. All this kind of thing. All right. They can get frustrated if they feel they're wasting time chatting or brainstorming instead of getting things done. You'll hear people say stuff, you know, well, you can talk about this all you want, I want to go get something accomplished around here. <laughs> Finally, goals endeavor to follow the rules of etiquette and demonstrate good manners. They are very proper. They tend to be. I remember I went to work at a, uh, <coughs> I went to work at a, fine dining restaurant. I thought it was the awesome thing. I learned where every piece of silverware was supposed to go, who was supposed to get served first, who did you pour the water uh, for first, what, what did what, I thought this was awesome. It was great. It was all very appropriate. I'm like, you don't know where the forks go. Yes, there is more than one fork, depending on the meat. We could have all kinds of forks and spoons. And, and I knew these things, and it was just very proper. And, and this was very affirming to me. I was like, this is great. The fact that I'm serving the proper person right at the proper time, I felt this was good stuff. 
and other people were just, could you just please just love me? You know, and so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the green, the green. When they communicate, they tend to reflect upon a conversation before responding. Usually what they have to say is very good. They've thought it out first. And not that anybody else isn't, but there was a purpose that they gave you the answer that they did. It was very intentional. They have a tendency to bypass emotional bonding with others and go straight for the data. Again, the blues and the, and, and the oranges are going to find this to be almost rude at times because they don't care about the feelings, but they just want the data. Okay? They like to, they're motivated, they like to talk about theories, new ideas, future plans, and their conversations can be expansive and global, envisioning new frontiers and possibilities. Now as we cover this, can you see how we might need in our world more than one type? Notice in everything that God created, there is variety. He didn't just make one kind of flower. There are millions of types of flowers. He didn't make just one kind of or one kind of dog. There are all kinds of different and, and different species. And why? Because it brings a variety and purpose and each individual has their place. And our blues love that kind of a statement. Yes, we're all important. We're all special. We're all... But it's true. We need people who can cast a vision and we need people who can accomplicate, uh, accomplish a vision. We need people who care about the purpose of it and so forth and bring life <coughs> if you have me constantly it's going to get a bit boring but when you have somebody bring a little bit of flair to it a little bit of expression to it and everything you can take this take the same concept and make it alive we need these other types of people greens feel good about a conversation when it can be expanded and lead to new ideas this isn't just it but boy, if you take this and, and you put that into practice, well, then you could go on to this, to that, and the next thing, if we can get this right, you know, it's a building block. It's not just one issue or concern. In group conversations, they appreciate having time to think before they respond. You say, give it to me right now, they're going to be very frustrated because they're going to feel like I'm not going to give you what I really want. But if you give me a few minutes, I'll think about it, and I'll give you something that is well thought out. They do not like to make mistakes. In communication, they dislike looking stupid. I skipped a statement. I will come back to it. So those of you that are following that outline. They do not want to look foolish. And consequently, they will take extreme care to know that they've done it right. They might be viewed as a silent type, but rest assured in their heads is a very active internal world of new ideas, possibilities, and thoughts. You may not think they're paying attention, and many times preachers fall into this thing. Is anybody out there listening to me? Can I get an amen in the house? And Okay, so everybody's Pentecost. We know I'm supposed to say amen at this point. Amen. And in your mind you're saying, I was listening. I was. I was processing. I was thinking about it. I may not have said anything, but I was. But all the oranges are like, praise God! Praise Yes! 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 And... Don't mistake my silence for not being with you. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. I'm processing. And I'm thinking about it. And what does that mean in my <laughs> life? And how does that apply in my life? And again, it's communication styles. Communication styles. They would rather say nothing at all than to say something wrong. They would have rather have been passed over and not had the opportunity to speak to than have spoken and then later say, you know what, that wasn't right. That wasn't, no, I should have thought that out better. They are objective types people. The one word, the communication style of grades would be objective. And they are most comfortable when they are in control of their emotions and they don't usually show them readily. They are not anti-emotion where your, your goals might be a little bit more stoic, but they keep them in control. Everything in its proper perspective. Okay, I, let's see, I misplaced my orange. Okay, orange. But I told them this was not going to be enough time. 
I wish I didn't say anything at all. I couldn't say this right. <laughs> See, this is very, very uh, bad for me and my communication style because to, to not have it right where you should have it, you know, I'm going to need it. When you're communicating, <coughs> they tend to be direct yet playful. This is fun. I like to enjoy this. They like to get to the point quickly and keep moving from there. They also have a propensity to take risks, troubleshoot, seize opportunities. They like to make fast decisions. This is very contrary to um, your greens and to your um, goals. They sum up a situation in an instant, identify an expedient solution and want to implement it immediately. They want it done now. And however, they're more likely to ditch their earlier decision if a greater opportunity or more thrilling option appears, contrary to the others. They don't want to change their mind. The, the, the Greens it no, no, we get it right the first time. And the gold saying, there's a right way and a wrong way. And if there's a right way and a wrong way, if I change my mind, that means I was wrong. And this is bad. But for the oranges, hey, this is better. This is good. This is great. This will be more exciting. We'll have more fun. And so let's just do it. <laughs> you can imagine how if you have a group of people like that and you change your mind. If you're facilitating a group and you've got a bunch of greens or golds in there, and you say, you know what? I changed my mind. We've got a better plan. We're going to put that whole thing to the side and do a, do a different one. And they're going to sit there and look at you. <laughs> you're doing what? <laughs> You know, it's bad enough that you change your mind, but for the last 30 years in this church, praise the Lord, we did it this way. And Anyways. Brother Davis was talking about it. You know, move in the pew. You move that right. You move that pew. I know it. Okay. Attracted by variety, new experiences, and fun, they tend to talk about adventures, tell jokes, share, or bring about their accomplishments along the way. And most oranges rather enjoy the spotlight and the attention they attract when expressing themselves. Now, how many, we always know when we have an orange in a Sunday school class because they're over there. And the rest of us sitting there like, thank you, do not know how to port yourself in a Sunday school. <laughs> I am being proper. You are just sacrilegious. You're, you know, and they'll. But we know it. We always know it when you have one of those because you're over there and you're sitting. You know, does this move? Does this move? Does this move? Can I write on the board? Can I write? I want to write the answer on the board. And then, you know, Germany likes Sally. <laughs> You know it. They're there. They're expressive. And they think this is fun. And, like, and the teachers are all going, send them up there, Pastor. Well, they don't need to get sent up there, Pastor, necessarily. Okay? So we have oranges. Lord bless them. But they want it to be fun, okay? And they're going to always be this. They'd rather enjoy the spotlight, the attention when it, that they get when they express themselves. They're notorious for moving around during conversation. My wife is sitting here with her phone. Fidgeting, 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 fidgeting. I'm talking to her. Would you put that thing away? You know, it is very disrespectful to be doing that while somebody is talking to you. You need to pay attention when somebody's... You know, I mean, come on. I'm trying to tell you something. This is serious. You know, I'm bearing my soul to you and you're sitting there fidgeting with your... Give me that cell phone. Okay? But some of them, they need to do this. This is how they occupy. They're just... It's not intended to be disrespectful, but they're like, you know, okay, all right, all right. This is just... 
whatever it does to keep my brain, you know, focused on what boring green. And <laughs> People have to say yes, yes, very nice. Okay, you know, some, you can understand how I just don't get that, but it is true. It is true. Okay, they're attracted uh, to new experiences and fun. They talk about adventures, tell jokes. Okay, they're notorious for moving around. They may pace, play with a rubber band, doodle, text on their cell phone while listening which all of us green and golds know, you're not really listening, but <clears throat> they are, they are. Um, they feel good about a conversation when it's entertaining, fun, and interactive, and they can rarely sit on the sidelines of a discussion w without getting bored. They need to be in. So when you're a Sunday school class, you need to bring these kids in somehow. If you're gonna keep them in control, let him be Joshua marching around the walls. Have him, use him as a prop in your lesson or her, because if they don't, they're going to be in your class anyways. Mm -hmm. And they will be a part. They will insert themselves if you don't allow them to. So make it productive. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be distracting. But give them an opportunity to be doing something. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there talking about this disruptive child like they're a problem. All they are is a child. Right. My pastor used to say, God put the wiggle in them. You'll never take it out of them. <laughs> and we, we try to. So yes, we want appropriateness. Yes, we want them to behave, but these are children that are still developing. They come from a variety of different uh, homes and expectations in homes. And so in your class, you're going to have to try to find a way to engage them. For me, when you have anything that's active, these kids are the ones you want doing it because they will be the best Joshua ever. Joshua will probably develop superpowers in the middle of it all. Okay, but oh, yeah. you know, this, is, this is who they are. Okay. When you, um, they either need to be amused and captivated by the person speaking or get involved themselves. So you're going to have to be really cool. And since I'm not really cool, I'm just involve them. Bring them in. You can be cool for me. Okay? When communicating, they want people to appreciate their flair. Okay? They can be boisterous, intense, prone to exaggerate. Uh, whether they're familiar with the topic, and this is something that was just revelatory to me. Anyways, whether they are familiar with the topic being discussed or not, they often come across confidently and persuasively. And for me, what I notice, because I'm detail-oriented, it says whether they are familiar with the topic or not. Now, see, for me, if I'm not familiar with the topic, I'm not talking about it. I, I will philosophically discuss it with you, or in theory, but I will not present it as fact, because I'm not sure. But if I know, I know. And if you're talking and you're not familiar with it, I'm going to find out by the time of the end of that conversation. And then I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Socrates was probably a gold or green. Because he began, to, he would open the discussion with somebody just for the sake of learning. And he would try to get somebody talking about it just to see what they know, so to see how he could learn. And he would say, well, at least I know I'm smarter than this one, because at least I know I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he was talking to an orange. Because they're going to talk about it whether they know anything or not. Because it's just fun talk. It's good. It doesn't matter. You know. All right. It is a relief to oranges when others can understand their gusto and value their enthusiasm. We want to be careful. We don't want to crush these people just because they don't know or because they're very expressive or because some things don't matter to them. And especially as you get older you're working with teens or you're working with adults, what happens is you can get somebody like myself who has a tendency to think in terms in the right way and a wrong way, standing on somebody, and because we are assertive and I can't stand, you can all say I'm wrong, and I can stand by myself, no problem, and stand on somebody just because they're enjoying themselves and, and, and squash their feelings or their passion for whatever just because we're right. Does that make sense? Did, 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 I, did I say that clearly enough? I know I, it made sense in my brain, but <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We need to give place for people to be excited, and they don't have to know everything about everything, and it doesn't have to always fit the way that we think it does. We need to be able to appreciate their input and appreciate their, their flair. Flair and me will never occur in the same <laughs> sentence, okay? 
All right, in an ideal world, oranges would like others to move with them from subject to subject, room to room, decision to decision. They enjoy options, excitement, and physical activity. You put it all together and you have a natural multitasker. Now these people, you get them on point. They can, covering different things all at one time, this is not hard for them, okay? The greens and the gold sometimes, they want to be so focused on getting it done right that I need to focus on one thing at a time. Multitasking is something that's frustrating because I can't do it all perfect. I can get it all done, but it ain't going to be perfect, and I want perfect. Okay? These oranges, they're, they're natural at doing that. Okay? <clears throat> Most individuals have become accustomed to having good eye contact during communication and find it rude when they don't have it. You may just accomplish more by having a conversation with them during a racquetball game. They don't care about the eye contact. You can get as much done with them in the middle of an activity as you can with everything else. You know, you don't need to sit down and have up. And if you demand that they sit still and give you their full attention, they don't need that. They're not that way. They can do all kinds of different things. All right? Their frustrations, oranges find protocol and etiquette cumbersome, and they want others to just lighten up. He can just relax. I've been told this many times. They get frustrated when their playful approach is interpreted as careless and wish others could understand. Their intent is to have everyone enjoy the process, no matter how tough the task. Can't we all just enjoy ourselves? Can't we all just have fun? This is their, their desire <coughs> their desire to do this. Okay? And in a word uh, or communication, oranges dislike hesitation. They want it always moving. They want action, they want it now. If someone pauses during a conversation, they may perceive it as an opportunity to switch subjects. My wife does this to me. I stop for a breath, which I do talk about. I enjoy talking. I enjoy, I can talk for a long time. I stop for a breath, and she turns around and walks away. What are you walking away from me for? I, I thought we were done. I said, done! I took a breath! <laughs> It's an amazing world that we live in. <laughs> and they, this is how fast they move. I mean, I want to thoroughly discuss this. I want to make sure complete understanding has taken place. You know, I constantly say, do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do, does that make sense to you? I want you to be able to reiterate to me that, yes, you did understand. Yes, you understand. You got... Okay, now on to the next topic. Of this. They're just constantly moving. Okay. Um, and they'll, of course, add their comments to spice it up a little bit. Even a slow-paced interaction can seem like a slow death to an orange who wants to get the show on the road. And again, just using my own personal life and my wife, she'll sit there sometimes and she'll be like, Ugh, can we be done with this already? Be done. We just got started. <laughs> Isn't this great? In a word, they are impactful. They like to communicate, to have fun, and make an impact. Whether this is to accomplish a goal or entertain, oranges like to punctuate their communication and engage others. From the shock of using colorful language to springing a surprise, ending to a story, they use large gestures and animated facial expressions to get their point across. Put them in the death ministry. <laughs> very good. Okay. I have um, tried to cover a lot of information very, very, very quickly. To kind of summarize it, and if, if I'm going to gauge, I'll, I will go as late as this next class. Well, <clears throat> in your classroom, this is just brief, okay? This, this, this is an overview. We took a lot of time to kind of explain what these things are. but. When you look at what motivates them, I've added in there kind of a thing is, uh, that describes what they do well at, you know, when they're shining, when they're uh, successful, these are attributes that they have, and these are the ways you want to communicate with them what their frustrations are. In a classroom, we're going to always have a variety of this. <coughs> and for me, in communication, most things uh, gone wrong are misunderstandings. It's not always an intentional, uh, say, fight, disagreement, whatever. Um, but we connect because of these communication styles. There are some that, as I was sharing myself, they're like, amen, brother, that is right. Because we are right. We do it the right way. Right. That's right. Um, <laughs> and on the other hand, you have others that their, their, their desire and what you look for 
in a, in a class or in teaching is going to be different. Now, you, the children are not always going to be able to express that to you. And we see it when it's right or wrong or goes right or goes wrong, when a class goes the way that we want it to or when a class is disturbed and disrupted and whatever. And those are the kind of words that we tend to use. More often than not is we weren't able to hold their attention. We already know that they have a short attention span. But it doesn't mean that we should be unsuccessful. It doesn't mean that we can't deliver the word of God. It doesn't mean that they can't get the deep good things of the word that you're going to share with them. It doesn't mean they can't understand repentance, baptism, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. What it means is that you and I are going to have to work very hard to try to look at our class and assess what makes them feel validated, what makes them connect, which ones. The oranges, you, you already know who they are. But you may, may have to fish a little bit for the greens and the blues. You know, they may come across a little moody sometimes or just, you know, disconnected and not really there. But find a way to draw them in because when you do, they will flourish. We don't have to make everybody like us. If you're orange, we don't all have to be orange. We don't all have to be whatever. Um, whatever that personality is, but you're going to have to look at it. And it's going to take effort on your part. And then, when you develop that lesson, you're going to have to try to find ways to say, this is where Johnny fits. This is where this one fits. This one will be content to sit in their chair and observe and soak it all in. They don't need to be drawn out. And while we want to give everybody a turn at some things, some of them don't care if they get a turn. There's some, I want to carry the offering bag back to this, or I want to collect up the offering. They want it because they want to be involved. And if that's what helps them stay connected in the class, well, praise the Lord, let them carry the offering bag. You know? Um, it, you know, their writing may not be as good as somebody else's, but if it helps them connect with what we're doing, let them do something. You may have to change this. And this is could, could come across as heresy to some folks. <laughs> change the class structure. We're going to have to do that. And, and it's going to be a challenge, but you can do it. And with... Just a little bit. I would encourage you to kind of push this a little bit your own self and, and look up some of these things because there's a, a tremendous amount of information that you can gather. All right. Are there any quick questions? People are dismissing here, but are there any quick questions that I could answer that maybe you have? Something that... Yes, ma'am. For toddlers, they're just basically starting out, but mm -hmm. like you said, the oranges are a lot easier to... Um, yes. To identify, but the other ones could, you know, be like serious, but they could expand. You don't know what's in their mind sure. yet. Sure. But so, like I said, because I've got toddlers, I got two, three, fours, and sometimes five year olds in my class, yes. and it, it's hard, but I'm the animated type thing. Sure. Because they. And that's they actually very good for them. I mean, mm -hmm. it really is, because. There, there's movement, there's things that are going on that they're going to be able to watch. And when you involve some of these children, children tend to follow others. And if you get some of these oranges going on something, whether it's learning a song, learning a Bible verse or something, um, you know, uh, maybe some sort of repetitious type thing, and you bring that to the class, the others are going to kind of want to follow along. And uh, as much as, you know, we may want to sing the song the right way, <laughs> And quote that verse right, but you understand that they they can help to be to, to lead, especially those that are not as familiar with what's going on. Thank you all for your patience.